Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying this sea urchin pattern. Um, it's a fly that's in Dick Brown's uh, Bonefish Fly Patterns book. Um, but I'm sure it'll take other species as well as bones. Um, fairly simple tie and I've modernised the pattern slightly just in light of the materials that we've got available nowadays. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel get access to the members only content the monthly tie-in meetings and be entered into the giveaways you can also subscribe, hit the bell button and that's all appreciate it so I've got my hook in my vise this is a size 4 on a fly liner it's a good strong hook um, I think there's actually a mistake in Dick Brown's book uh, just looking at the pictures um, and the hook that's listed but again, this is not the original hook anyway. But it's I like this to have something quite short in the shank, compact, a good gape, um, and to be nice and strong. I mean, I've heard of people catching parrot fish on these wee black urchin type flies, and I mean those beaks. It's a good idea to have something stout. I've only ever caught a bone fish in this fly, uh, but it's. But as I say, I'm sure other fish will eat them. So I've run on some black 140 thread. I'm going to get some black deer here, and I like to tie this in in two bunches, um, just because I can control the butt ends a bit better. I feel. Um, so I'm going to cut it. See, you want if you think about it, you want it, your long ends to be, see a gap to a gap and a half, or maybe even two gaps, right? I do not stack the hair. Just cut it off. Use it as it is. A couple of loose wraps and then just spin and you can take a turn or two through the rock bottom ends just to encourage it and what I like to do is I try to get a sort of most of the tips on the gap side if I can and I'll actually sort of stroke them I don't mind if there are a few sticking up but I want the bulk of them inside the gap I'm going to just cut this now, especially my butt ends, to avoid too much bulk getting in the way of my next spin. Like that. And I like quite a coarse deer hair for this, but I mean, if you've got fine, fine hair, it's probably not a, pro a problem. You know, the fish won't mind at all. I just sort of like it. I think it looks a bit urchiny, a bit more urchiny when it's out, um, when it's coarse. Same again. I've cut that the same length. Just going to offer it in. Take my two loose wraps. Get it spun. Right. That's pretty good. Same as before, just come through the butt ends a couple of times. Bring the thread to the front. And whip finish. I'm not being particularly fussy, just a couple of turns is alright because it's all going to be encased in resin. So, just take this at the vise and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to get right in close on top of the shank which will obviously be the underside of the fly and I'm going to sort of come along the sides of the shank as well nice and tight I'll take the butt ends away 
so that what I'm left with is this wee plume of spikes, basically. Yeah, that's the spines of the the fly. Now, the original pattern, I would now mash it, wouldn't it be a uh, split shot mashed onto here with epoxy allowed to dry and then covered with uh, liquid latex mixed with acrylic paint. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use UV resin and then colour the UV resin so I'm just going to use a bit of gel type super glue on the back and then I'm going to get my, my split shot. This is a treble A non-toxic shot um, but obviously adjust to suit yourself and I'm going to push that right on onto the underside and then I'm going to keep pressing down and I'm just going to pinch it with my pliers just to get it to grip and then just wait for it to dry right um, I mean if you're tying a batch of these, say you're doing half a dozen, just do all the deer hair. Do all the split shot. Right? Just do it. Do them all in individual stages. It's probably dry enough. I'm going to come in with my flexible UV resin. Right? I'm using Solar Res Flex. And I'm going to saturate any deer hair butts and let it come in. I'm going to completely encase the split shot just get it all covered you don't need a huge thick layer but get it covered and zap it so now that we've got this zapped in case split shot, I'm going to colour up the bottom and I'm just going to use nail polish and we'll start with red and I'll just come around make sure you cover up the the shot, right, you don't want any You don't want any of that sort of metallic colour shown through. And then let it dry. And when the red stuff's dry or nearly dry, you can come in with some black. As I say, this is why you, you would stage tie these. Um, you know, you can just be moving on to the next one between between the stages as like the varnish dries and the glue dries and all that. And once the varnish is dry, just come in with another bit of the UV resin and just coat that again. That just protects it, keeps the colour, stops it chipping off. Again, quite happy to let that resin kind of work into the the roots of the hair. Cure it. I 
give it a right good cure. I normally put these into a nail salon lamp. Um, a lot of my UV resin flies, I put them in a nail salon lamp for 20 minutes. Um, and make sure everything's make sure all that resin's fully fully set, totally cured. And you like if you do that, you actually find that it doesn't matter what brand you use, they're all tack free. Um, but I do like solar res, it's to my mind the best I've tried and I've tried a lot of them. So there you go, that's again another slightly unusual bonefish fly maybe, but it's worth tying a couple up, you don't need to put a dozen of them in your box, you know, maybe have half a dozen, the first time you tie them then you'll only need to top up one or two between trips probably because you probably are going to pick other flies first, just out of confidence. But, make no mistake, this does catch fish. So, I hope that was useful, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below, and subscribe to the channel. Tight lines guys, bye!